Hello, everyone. My name is Monique Tan, and I, I work at the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Today, I would like to convince some of you to complete the functional human proteome together with the next prot team. To begin with, um, let's take a look at what we know about the human proteome. So Nexprot is the SIB knowledge base on human proteins. It provides data taken from a number of different sources and tools to analyze these data, thus providing a platform to explore the universe of human proteins. Now, the data is all available through the CC BY 4.0 license and most of the code is also on GitHub. So what do we know about the human proteome? Well, um, let's consider the uh, human uh, proteomics organization, which launched the human proteome project uh, 10 years ago or 11 years ago. And their aim was to uh, get evidence from mass spectrometry for uh, the presence of um, as many as possible of the 20,000 protein coding genes that humans have. And to do so, we will consider the uh, protein existence value that is in Uniprot, where uh, when there is experimental evidence at the protein level, it's PE1. When it's evidence at the transcript level, it's PE2. The value is PE3 when there's evidence coming from uh, a species other than human, PE4 when the evidence comes from a gene model, and PE5 means it's rather uncertain whether there is uh, uh, the pro protein exists. And at Nexprot, we use exactly the same uh, PE value scale as Uniprot, and we also apply the same use to assign these values. Now, since we have data from a number of additional resources, we can upgrade the protein existence values of entries, which are PE2, 3, or 4, to PE1 with mass spectrometry data taken from Peptide Atlas, Massive, and Nexprot, and to PE2 uh, with um, RNA-seq data from Human Protein Atlas and BG. Last year, the HPP project reached a major milestone in that over 90% of the predicted human proteins uh, have been detected. This came out as a Nature Communications paper. And Nexprot being the reference database for this project, you can see here for the current release that just over 90% of the entries currently have evidence, uh, which is PE1, so at the protein level. Let's now turn to the functional human proteome. What do we know about the function of these human proteins? <clears throat> in Nexprot, we have this information, the protein function view. So I've shown here the example for MSH6, which is a DNA mismatch repair protein. <clears throat> and we provide evident, uh, information about function at three different levels. At the molecular level, for example, if it's an enzyme, um, what biological processes it's involved in and what pathways it is in. Now to look at how many proteins do not have a function associated, we have this Sparkle query, query 22, in which we exclude proteins which are PE5. And we also exclude those which have annotations to very general uh, gene ontology terms, i.e. protein binding. And we see that there are 1,669 such entries in Nexprot. So let's try and predict the function for some of these proteins. For the last two years, we've been organizing at the University of Geneva uh, a course which is called Fonctionaton. And in this course, uh, the undergraduate students get training about um, databases, bioinformatic tools, and they are then assigned one of these proteins, which doesn't have a function. You see here, it just has protein binding that's known about it. And they're um, divided into groups of two to four students, assigned the tutor, given the protein, and then they go through a manual data mining workflow, which consists of 
what a bio curator would do. So they extract information from the literature. So they do searches in PubMed, they compile data from databases and they run bioinformatics tools on the sequences and so on. And they take all this information and build a protein identity card uh, consolidating the information that they have on the protein. And this enables them to formulate the hypothesis as to what the function of the protein could be. And they also propose an experimental experiments to test these hypotheses. And the tutors then um, you standardize this hypo these hypotheses using gene ontology and evidence um, code terms. So if we take the example I've shown here and take a quick look at the ID card, we see that we have all the names for the proteins. This is of course important to know what you're going to be searching for. Um, because in essence, what the students are doing, they're acting as profilers on these unknown proteins, trying to gather information and trying to determine what the protein does. So they will look at the conservation across species. They will look at domains and PTMs. They will look at where in the cell the protein is located, what other proteins it interacts with, where it is expressed. And also um, what phenotypes and diseases are associated with uh, this protein. And they will come to a conclusion and pro propose a hypothesis. So in this case, the students proposed that this entry had ribonuclease activity. And this is the Go molecular function term ribonuclease activity for this entry. Now, these, um, Predictions of the function of the proteins are now displayed in Nextprot, as you see here. So it's displayed in a community function prediction page for the entry. And we see here the ribonuclease activity term we saw for the entry uh, with the orchids uh, of the tutors and a number of different evidences representing the different type of data supporting this function. So what's next? Well, I started off saying I would try and convince you to uh, join us in this endeavor to uh, find the function for the remaining human proteins. So um, if you wish to do so, please use the contact option in Nextprot, send us your ORCID, uh, tell us which entry you've selected from the query, uh, tell us what you think the protein does and why, if you can't express this as uh, terms, we'll be happy to do so. And if the data comes from a publication, please provide the PubMed ID and we will post your function prediction. So on behalf of the Nextprot team, thank you very much. And I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you.